Hi, my name is Paul Toby from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me for this video tutorial on piano chord jazz progressions. And specifically what we're going to be talking about today is how to voice chords in the left hand with a simple pattern and you can solo or play melody in the right hand at the same time. And it's going to make your playing sound a lot richer. You can use this situation when you're playing by yourself or with a band. So we're going to do 2-5-1 in C just to show you how the pattern works. So if we're in C major 7th, we're going to go from 2 minor 7 to 5 7 to 1 major 7 or 2 5 1. And that 2 5 1 progression is a progression that is used a lot in jazz. In fact, it probably covers 85% of all chord progressions. And if you're talking about major or minor. So, how do we voice these chords? Well, the first thing you have to understand is in a 2 minor 7th chord, what extensions are available? So if you build the chord in thirds, called tertian harmony, you're, you, you can find out which extensions are available if you keep going up in thirds. If you want more information about this, go take a free lesson at jazzmental.com and it talks about the origins of tertian harmony and where this all comes from. So if we're in D minor 7, That's a standard four note D minor seventh chord. But if you continue to go up in thirds, you're going to be able to use also the ninth and the eleventh. It's actually a very nice sounding chord. It's used a lot. And what we want to do when we voice that chord is to catch some of those extensions, the ninth and the eleventh. The thirteenth is not available because it creates a flat nine, so it sounds like this kind of starts to sound okay, but not really. There's this flat nine with a third of the chord, and that's never a good thing. So then when we move to the G7 chord, the ninth and the 13th are available, and the 11th is not. So let's do that. Again, the 11th is not available because it creates a flat nine with a third of the chord very harsh sounding uh, chord. So that's a G7-13 chord and then when we go to one major seventh the ninth and the thirteenth are available and the eleventh is not. So if we play those chords in root position you can see that you're bouncing around all over the keyboard, and that's never a good thing. So it's kind of sound like this. So that's not what we want. What we want is for the left hand to move as little as possible and catch some of the richness of those chords. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out without the root. We're going to start out in second position or second inversion. And we're going to start on the F and build up in thirds. That way we're catching the, the, the ninth. We're not covering the eleventh. We don't need to do it all the time, but we're catching the ninth. So that's an important uh, inversion. And then when we move to the G seventh chord, all we need to do is move one finger. We're going to move from the C down to the B and that's going to be our G7-13 chord. Did you hear that? It's like going from sort of a nice sounding chord to a little bit of uh, dissonance, and then we're going to resolve it. And the way that we resolve it is we move down the outer three fingers to here. So we moved from here and we kept the B in play and moved the outer three notes down one in the, in the key. 
And the cool thing about that is if you actually move up to the fourth inversion, you can do the same thing up here. It's the same notes, you're just moving the bottom two notes up to the top. So if this was D minor seven to start with, we can go from here, we can, we can do it from here. Move one note to the G7. Move the upper three fingers to the C major seventh. So whether it's this inversion, or this one, you're catching a lot of the richness of those chords. And the cool thing about that is if you're doing like three, six, two, five, one, uh, you can figure out which inversion you wanna use so that the left hand is not bouncing all over the place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this to a standard like body and soul. And so if the 251 is in D minor, the first 251 is in D flat. So if this was a C major seven, this is D flat major seven. It's the same uh, progression, the same movement of fingers, except you're moving up a half step from here to here. So this is an infinitely useful way to voice chords with the left hand. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply that to body and soul and see how the left hand doesn't move around a lot but catches a lot of the richness of those jazz chords. That's a cool progression. If you go from B flat minor seventh to E flat seven, and then the E flat seven changes to E flat minor seventh, you're using, in the first case, the fourth inversion, and in the second case, the second inversion. So this is very cool. And then if you start to add rhythm to that, it starts to really sound like music. And this is a really great way of playing because you don't need to play the root. That's up to the bass player, let them do that. So if you're doing this, the bass player is doing this. Try it, I think you're gonna find it infinitely useful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and go subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.